Hello, spiritual seekers, and welcome to a more relaxed episode of Think Spiritual Podcasts. With a bit of coffee this morning, not something I drink a lot of, and just, like I said, a more relaxed atmosphere. The Hero's Journey series is done. I'm not even scripted at the moment. I did have a script planned for this episode, and it was getting rather large and bulky, and maybe that would have been okay, maybe not, but I decided to just go with this more relaxed, and I won't even be sitting here talking on camera very much. We're going to go over to the computer, and I'm going to show you what I have in store for the future. Uh, what you're seeing on screen right here is my own interpretations of the hero's journey and the heroine's journeys, or as I've called them, the duality and balance of the heroes and heroine's journeys. This is the sum up and the very finale of the hero's journey series of Think Spiritual Podcasts. And the heroine's journey series will start in September of 2020 just a few months from now. Right now, it is June 3rd that I'm recording this. I'll put this episode out on June 4th, and I will also make these diagrams available on the thinkspiritual.ca website, and I'll also do some uh, social media in posts in regard to these. So what I wanted to do here today is just do a very simple uh, we're just screenshotting and just kind of go through what my thought process here was in developing these. So the first thing to look at here is we're just going to look at the hero's journey. And obviously what I've done is that I've taken the, instead of doing the typical wheel of the journey, it's still a wheel, it's still circular. But what I've done is that I've fit the pathway into the yin and yang. So what we have is the yang, the masculine energy of the yin and yang, and the yin, the feminine energy of the yin and yang. And what I'm showing here is how the hero's journey, when we take the hero's journey, we move, we're moving down into the depths of the feminine and the emotions. So we're moving from the masculine into the feminine. That's the entire point of the hero's journey is to move from your completely masculine, performance-oriented uh, living, way of living, into the feminine and your emotions, opening up that side of yourself and trying to bring yourself into some form of balance. So that's what I'm saying here. So if we start at normal existence, which I've called the zero step of the hero's journey because it's not, uh, it's not a considered a specific step in most hero's journey models and i do like to consider it as a place where you can be so this is why i also have these large circles with red outlines on them these are places within the journey where you can become stuck uh, you can keep living your life in these ways this is what i'm saying here so at the zero step then there is step one the call to adventure and this step one so it brings you over to this point in the yin and yang. So there's the dot in the yang. There's this dot of yin in the yang here. And it's at this point we recognize that it's like, oh, it's like I do have this feminine energy. I do have these emotions. What do I do about them? Now, this is where you can get stuck because you can get to refusal of the call and you can just continue in this cyclic behavior for there, there's no time limit. You can, you can sit here your entire life and never move and always be stuck here, always be stuck here, always be stuck here. But if we actually accept the call, then we begin to move out of our patterns of behavior and begin our journey. So this is what I've done with this dotted line to represent that we're moving away from our old patterns of behavior and moving to a sort of a new place, and we're moving down towards the feminine and the emotions as we should be, this is where we find our supernatural aid. Something comes along to aid us along the way, to help us continue moving down 
And here we are right at the very corner, right at the bottom of the yang energy of the masculine. And this is the threshold right here. This is the boundary into the feminine and the emotions. So from here, we move into the belly of the whale. And this is where we, we have that death and rebirth cycle, that first death and rebirth cycle. It's the death of our old ways and moving into something new. And so this is where now we're into our second possible loop. Uh, so we, we have to go around this loop at least. So we have to be on our road of trials. This is our road of trials. We, we end up, we end up here. Uh, so we meet with the goddess, uh, and then there that's, this is why I've rolled this back around. So the temptation, as I said in the hero's journey series is to think that your journey is done, that you've done enough and you know, maybe your old ways of living, you're calling you and you just want to go back to them. And that's the thing in the, in the yin, there is this dot of yang. It's where the yin and the yang flow into each other through those dots there. And we can, we can look at that and go, Oh, mm, I kind of want to go back to the way things were. It was way easier. You know, any number of reasons, right? Watch the series to, to, to hear all of my, thoughts on 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 that <laughs> so if we're not careful we can get stuck in this road of trials loop and always be you know coming back and kind of wanting to be reborn over and over again wanting to just meet with our goddess again and again our other half wanting to uh always having that temptation of going back so again it's a loop of behavior that we might have to break i've always i've said before it's like this is you know batman can be stuck here in this road of trials for instance so and it's it's sort of an avoidance of getting up here with our atonement with the father of 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 you know coming to terms with those things that have the most power over us once we do that once we do move out of those pattern of behavior once we do you know, make amends, atone with, uh, even overcome the things that have great power over us, then we can move into our true apotheosis moment where we can actually, you know, recognize the divinity in ourselves, recognize, see what it is to be our highest self. We're not there yet, but, but at least we know that we can get there. And then we can move into the ultimate boon stage. Now, refusal of return is step 12. This is another possible loop where you can get stuck uh, and you can just be like, yeah, it's like, I, I don't, I don't want to, this is the point where you can be like, I don't want to go back. And you have to recognize that you do have to go back because you have something to offer the world. You have something to teach the world at this point. So, and these are the steps, the magic flight, the rescue from without the crossing of the return threshold. And finally, so what I've done here too is and this is something i would do if i could kind of shift the series around a bit is that i would do freedom to live first and then instead of going back to necessarily normal existence it's still normal existence but i've called it the balanced world so i've taken these big green circles and i represent them as symbols of balance so that's the thing like you can kind of shift either way you can shift either way into the masculine or feminine energy very easily then but it's a it's a comfortable thing you're not swinging you're not swinging you know far and wide far and wide and then i actually put master of two worlds as the final last step of the hero's journey because one thing is even in this freedom to live you can actually move so you can move back right to normal existence and start another hero's journey quite easily if you want to or you could actually move down into the feminine and I'll go to that in a moment where you can actually uh, start the heroine's journey then. So this is a, a, that's another thing I'll mention in a second here. So I put Master of Two Worlds as the last step because it is the highest self. And I think for most masculine minded people that I believe that Master of Two Worlds, and I said this in, in that episode, that this is more difficult to attain than some other things within the hero's journey. It's, it is reaching your highest and best self. And so this is why I put it a little higher up on the journey and kind of on its own. And that's the thing. You can move back and forth between these steps quite easily. 
so again, it, it it is just a representation, but it's a this is a very different representation though than typical hero's journey wheels. And I'm I, I have to admit that I'm rather proud of it. I think it it definitely took some creativity and some thought to get this to fit. And what I wanted to do ultimately the the other purpose of it was to create the mirror image to create the heroine's journey. So I've blurred out a lot of the steps here. Uh, I didn't want to reveal them at this time. I'm going to do the full reveal in September when it comes. And so it starts, as you can see, it is the mirror image, even though I didn't flip the yin and the yang. I don't know if I'm going to do that exactly. I still want to. So the, the, the point is, is that the pathway and the journey is flipped. So as you can see, it's mirror image. So step step one, the, I've labeled them one to 19 in this case, rather than zero to 18, because this is my own interpretation. I've developed this from the ground up. Uh, I haven't copied anybody else's work in this case. I did take some inspiration from a few people's work. Uh, I really like, so I called the first step, the perfect world, perfect in quotes. Uh, I, I borrowed that phrasing, um, even though it's slightly different. She called it the illusion of the perfect world from Victoria Schmidt and her version of the heroine's journey. The only issue that I had with her version of the heroine's journey is that it does not mention the masculine. And I'm saying, what I'm saying is that the hero's journey is always about going from, well, let's go back to this. As I said, moving down into the depths of the feminine and the emotions, and then you're rising back up to the world of the masculine and aiming for balance. Now, the heroine's journey is the opposite. The heroine's journey is moving upwards from the feminine depths into the masculine, and then living in the masculine and working back towards the feminine and balance. That's the purpose of the heroine's journey. So the purpose of the heroine's journey is not to reconnect with the feminine. That's that. That's the job of the hero's journey. As I've said down here, male does not equal hero or masculine. Female does not equal heroine or feminine. Masculine and feminine are energies and traits. All genders can take one or both journeys. It doesn't matter what your what your gender is, what your uh, uh, what your what what your energy is. If you're mostly a masculine-oriented person, you're going to need to connect with your feminine. If you're a feminine-oriented person, you're going to need to connect with your masculine at some point to live that balanced existence. This is the point of both journeys. So as I said, obviously I've blurred out a lot of my steps here that I've created. I've given them fairly whimsical titles. That's to sort of represent the feminine origins of the journey. So we start at the perfect world and which is the mirror opposite of normal existence over here. And you also notice, too, is that it's sort of in the same place as Road of Trials is over here. So my, my argument and, and thought process here is that if you stay too long, if you get stuck in that Road of Trials loop, you end up breaking out of the hero's journey and you end up having to take the heroine's journey then because you've lost, if you stay over here in your road of trials loop, then you've completely lost contact, say, with your masculine energy, possibly. So then you have to rise back up and reclaim that. It's just in theory, right? It's as, as we go through the series, we'll kind of, I'll figure that out a little more. This hasn't been, again, this is just in development process still. Uh, so as I said, right, I had used Victoria Schmitz. Uh, Ma Maureen Murdoch is the person who uh, probably has done the most work on the heroine's journey. I've not read any of her work. And she does talk about the feminine going up and connecting with the masculine and healing that wounded masculine. That's her model there, which I, I very much agree with her model. Any model of the heroine's journey that says you're going and reconnecting with the feminine? No, that's still a hero's journey. It, that's, that is the hero's journey. And let's say in regards to gender, women do need to do that in this day and age. W women are, and we'll, we'll talk about a lot of this as I develop this, because women do are forced into the world of the masculine, and then they do have to reconnect with their feminine at some point in life. But they are forced into that world because we, we live in that very performance-oriented masculine 
uh, money making societies that's that's the way we run things and we need to balance things out more in our world so this is what this is why i've kind of developed these side by side journeys here uh so okay so yes i guess you can basically see like i said we'll do the full reveal of this in september and i am talking a lot i'm quite enjoying talking about this at the moment it was taking me a while to to get going on it but anyway so briefly so it's the same kind of idea there's the there's the stuck loops of behavior then moving out of this perfect world uh and then steps two uh step three is obviously very similar to refusal of the call i've named it something again much more whimsical uh up to step four step five i've called it leaving the waters because i've often said in a lot of my movie reviews and things like that that the i talk about the depths of the feminine or the depths of the soul and it's being in the waters right so so this is part of my whimsical uh titling here so i've said it's leaving so crossing the first threshold is leaving the waters uh and then instead of the belly of the whale then as i said the masculine goes down to the feminine and it has to be in the belly of the whale to be reborn well the feminine comes up out of the waters and has to enter the dark forest and into the that's the masculine is the dark forest in in the woods there and then the version of temptation then is standing on the shoreline i call it it's the temptation to go back to the waters instead of continuing the journey into the masculine it's the temptation to go back into the feminine and then we move on and move on and then i've done a step called pregnancy and this is necessary and this is not uh pregnancy may not have anything to do with physical pregnancy again this is not about gender but pregnancy the feminine is the only one who can become pregnant so she the the masculine doesn't have that ability but the feminine brings that ability into the masculine so when she rises up then and she joins with the masculine then she has the capability of becoming pregnant so and this is something we all need many time we do anything creative we're giving we're, we're becoming pregnant and giving birth to new ideas and 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 creativity and things like that so uh so then so this is where i've changed things a little bit so in the hero's journey step 12 is re uh, refusal of return and i said that this is a place where the masculine can easily become stuck and doesn't want to return to the doesn't want to return to the mask and doesn't want to uh, bring bring the ultimate boon back now i've made this as not a sticking for the for the feminine this is not a sticking point then this the this version of uh of her version say i'm still using he he and her it's just easier to differentiate uh and that's also the way our duality of our brain works a little bit um so 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 the feminine version of the heron's journey version of refusal of return is i've made it a little bit different is that it's okay for her to become stuck there if because this could be her bliss this could be where she's happiest it, and and it's okay for her to be there because the masculine in the hero's journey can become very angry and upset if they stay in this in this spot and because it's a place of inaction whereas the feminine is a little bit okay with that and it's and it's a happier place for her to be maybe she can move on out of it if she so desires then she can move on out of it but this is one thing i've added here is that if she does move out of it at some point there's sacrifice to make there's always the feminine always has to make a sacrifice at some point or other it's just it's necessary in order to live in both worlds happily there has to be a sacrifice of some type and it doesn't mean that something is cut out of her life forever or anything like that it just means that there's a time it's always going to be a little bit harder for her to live in both both worlds in that particular regard without a sacrifice and so that's where i've also put the balance world then is the same position as with the as with the hero's journey the balance world step 17 the balance world step 18 and then there is a highest self for the feminine as well something but it's different than master of two worlds her version of master master of two worlds i'm actually putting at step 17 here uh 
or did I even put it back? No, I can't remember. <laughs> even I fuzz it. No, I did put it at step 17. Um, but yes, then her highest, her highest self is actually closer to the freedom to live version of the hero's journey. So this is, so this is the stuff that I'm kind of hinting at and, uh, and and where where we'll go in September 2020 when that comes around. So I will make this diagram available on the thinkspiritual.ca website and I'll do I have separate diagrams that I've created as well. The hero's journey one is finished and complete. There's some other stuff on that diagram. The heroine's journey like I said in September I will completely reveal that and complete that. We'll go through that before and then we'll start the series. And I have some idea. I have slightly different ideas. I, I think the channel is going to become completely focused on the heroes and the heroines' journeys, uh, and I'm and I'm going to make sure that any movie reviews I do kind of link to the steps that I'm discussing at the time. So, so I I think that's the direction I'm going to go. I am also writing a hero's journey uh, book at this point, sort of based on my Hero's Journey series, but it's all kind of new material. It's kind of all like more stuff that I've learned as I did that series. So uh, I, I'm hoping to have that out by the end of the year. I don't know. Uh, and the plan is to basically make it completely online and very, very cheap. Uh, it's just going to be a, it's just going to be a few dollars, nothing, nothing expensive or anything like that. And I don't think I'm going to do hard copies unless there's a lot of demand for it. But anyway, thank you very much for listening. As always, I've rambled a fair bit and, but that's okay. I was actually very excited about talking about this and I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to beginning this series. It's actually taken a lot for me to not do it now <laughs> it's <laughs> i've had to like really force myself to take a break at this point but i know i need to i know it's good to thank you so much for listening for subscribing for being great heroes thank you so much for your support and uh, uh encouragement along the way so many of you i really appreciate it thank you very much for everything and i will see you again in september but i technically won't be gone because there will be stuff being released short videos being released over the next few months anyway <laughs>